It's important to me to make a difference in the world because I came out of the 60s. I, I, I think it's basically utopianism. I think when the Beatles sang, we can change the world, I bought it. I meditate, so I have the experience of one-pointedness. But I also let myself drift. A combination of focus and giving up control at the same time. And it's about the ability to walk between worlds, and there's a lot of different worlds to walk between, and this is sort of having one foot in this world and one foot in some other place, and I'm trying to um, sort of stretch between those two things and doing it with my hands by creating things. I am primarily a painter. I do a lot of drawing. I've got 85 journals slash art books. I do printmaking. I do installations, ofrendas, and shrines. I do sculpture. I do a little bit of performance, but it's mostly for the gods. Why would I be working with a non-human audience? Well, gratitude. You know, it's, it's also a little bit more like gardening, where you are acknowledging that you're only part of the process. I mean, nobody goes into a garden and goes, look at that tomato plant, I did that. But yet we get to the art world and, and artists have rather large ego, and they go, ah, I did that. Well, maybe. You did part of it. I'm self-taught. I've never taken an art class. Unless you count the one in seventh grade where we learned to make enameled tie clips. <laughs> A lot of what I do comes out of working in the building trades, carpentry and house painting, and uh, I went to welding school and learned how to use my hands. And uh, I love technical art, but I, that's just not my mode. I, I made a decision long ago that I just didn't want technique to stand between me and what I was up to. I have an iconology that I work with a lot. There's fish over and over again in my work. I grew up fishing. Minnesota. I have dreams about fish. I mean, why do, we, why do we live in a world surrounded by cars, but we still dream about fish? I don't dream about cars. I dream about fish. I have skulls, but they're Day of the Dead skulls. They're not like goth skulls or heavy metal skulls. And my skulls are pink and lime green. Day of the Dead is a big deal for me, but why is it a big deal for me? Well, a connection to Mexico, this, that, and the other. But also it's because, you know, I'm getting older, mortality is a, a, an issue for me, and has been since I had my first heart failure at 20. It's an old, old tradition in Buddhism to meditate in the graveyards. So the whole dance with death, or whether you choose to not dance with death, is part of what determines your relationship with life. And so working with the skull icon and what happens if it's pink with big polka dots on it, does that allow me to face my mortality more? I'm not sure, but something's going on. Something's going on inside me where, uh, you know, um, heck, dying isn't the hard part. Living's more difficult. Um, I've cl come close enough a number of times. I was raised in St. Louis Park with the Norwegian Lutheran side of the family. 
My father was half Mexican and half cowboy. I could sight read and sing Bach cantatas by the time I was 11 because of all the choir training I had. My mother was a music teacher. I mean, I didn't like it at the time because all I wanted to do was play center field like Willie Mays. I went away to college for a short, uh, illustrious career uh, where I seemed to major in fighting against the war in Vietnam, uh, civil rights. Fall of 66, I went to where Allen Ginsberg was reading. And up till that time, I thought the beats were phonies. And Allen Ginsberg blew my mind. Eventually came back to Minnesota where I studied with a Zen master here in town. Somewhere along the line, when I was about 30, I'd always been involved in music and writing, and then it shifted and I just woke up one day and I was a visual artist. That's kind of how I got here. I helped found and was on the board of uh, Art of World. I helped Robert Bly found the Minnesota Men's Retreats and that whole men's movement. Grupo Soap del Corazon is the Latino artist group that I co-founded with Javier Tavera that is now 12 years old. My latest is I've been thinking a lot about starting a museum. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> meditating. Some days are horrible. You just, your mind's filled with junk. You sit there and watch the junk. And other days you sit down and you just sail, you know, and it's the same way in here. The other day I counted 37 projects that were laid out in the studio, but that didn't include the things that are in my notebooks and lists. I literally have written down projects for the next 30 years of my life, you know, and they're all different. The ideas are so seductive. I try to write them all down and then just let go because it's you just can't keep up with them. The thing that's hard for me is there's always new things to start. I'm trying to create a place where the soul feels nurtured and where our sense of enchantment comes back into life so that you walk in, you look at my paintings, you look at the work, you're in this place and you feel that once again that the world is in fact a magical place. Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.